Hey guys, Josh from Solution Based. I want to talk to you guys about the horizontal application air handler because it is a little different and has some different considerations that I want you guys to think of. Um, primarily, what I want you to understand is that this thing has water in it. All its incarnations have water, whether it's a horizontal furnace, horizontal air handler, horizontal heat pump air handler. Um, they have water in them and that water needs to be managed. It can be water in the form of condensate for the air conditioning system, the most common. It can be water in the form of condensate for a high efficiency heater, also common. It can be water in the case of this one that has a fan coil from a boiler on it. That also has to be managed. So there are um, uh, multiple considerations when it comes to uh, water in an upper floor because it can wreck the house and the number one that you're going to want to have is this right here Which is an emergency pan coupled with this right here, which is a float switch those things are code You must have them when you have an air handler in this situation and you know I don't know how many of you have experienced but we get calls every year for you know water dripping through the ceiling Sometimes the ceiling coming crashing down into a bedroom because this thing has been slowly dripping and no one realizes it and either the float switch was faulty there was no not one installed in the first place they didn't put a pan in any number of things that can create that issue um, <clears throat> excuse me but we want to make sure that these things are uh, being observed that we have float switches that we have emergency pan and, and, and all these things so that we don't end up with a ceiling coming crashing down and or damage inside uh, the home from the water that this inevitably is going to generate. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure if you have a horizontal one, you, I, I always recommend that you do your maintenances and have your uh, service company come out and make sure that everything's in working order every year. But with these you especially do because they can damage your home much more readily just by a few drips of water crashing through a ceiling. So. Um, the other thing about um, horizontal units is sometimes their filters can be remote. In this case, because it's a walk-up attic, the filters are located right with the system, just like we had in one of our other videos. Here's the media filter for this one. I also happen to have a media filter on this one for the uh, dehumidification system, which is over in the corner there. You can't see it, or not in the corner, but you can't see it. Um, the other thing that I also recommend always, and unless it's absolutely impossible, with horizontal systems inside attic, is this trapeze. If you see, what these pieces of all thread do is they go down to pieces of unistrut and they suspend this entire unit off of the ground. And the reason why we do that is because now that we have this unit off of the ground, the vibrations that this inevitably creates, which you can't avoid, all fan and machinery creates vibration, now has to travel up this piece of rod into the roof rafter, then down and through. And by the time it gets back to the inhabitants of the structure, it has been reduced to so much less or nothing because it's run out of energy. Vibration is, you know, sound, it's all energy, right? So what we're doing is we're expending that energy by making it travel a longer distance to the people. That's all that's going. We're sending it on a journey. By the time it gets there, it's tired and it doesn't sound anywhere near as loud. That's what that's all about. But so many guys walk in, they throw the air handler right on the floor, they turn it on, and then the Mr. and Mrs. go, man, that thing is so loud. And it's just poor design. And there are times where you barely have enough room to get the air handler in, and it's either put it on the floor or have no air conditioning. In those cases, look, we put sound isolators on it. We understand sometimes the building tells us how we're gonna design. But in most cases, this is completely possible and the absolute way that you wanna handle this, and that is a suspension rack, unit not touching the ground at all, and then by the time the duct does come in contact with it, again, it has lost some of its gusto, and the duct in the attic is always gonna be insulated. That's also gonna help keep you from getting vibration through the structure. So that's really just gonna to lead to a lot better comfort um, if you are about to have one of these installed, you already have one and you're doing a swap out, you're replacing an existing system. Whenever I can, when I replace an existing system, if it's sitting on the ground, I get it off the ground. So ask your contractor, say in my, my contracts, it'll say supply and install suspension rack for unit. Um, so you want to, some, some contractors will put 
sound isolators. Well, you want to ask, what do you mean sound isolators? Do you mean like cork pads, you're going to throw something underneath of it? Or do you mean you're going to lift the unit off the ground? There is no sound isolator that works as well as actually having an air gap between the structure and the vibration that is being created by the unit. Nothing works as well as that. You can also put, we, and we actually have, there are sound isolators actually in here between the suspension rack and the unit to help reduce the vibration that even then gets to our suspension rack. And all these things then lead to less interruption for the inhabitants of the home. And I mean, you know, some of the things you hear me talk about is, hey, hey, this is expensive. This is not expensive. It is not expensive to, you know, put a suspension rack in and put some sound isolators on and get this system to operate as quietly as it possibly can. But, you know, the, the whole thing might have cost 400 bucks additional, 500 bucks additional during the install. So really a, a very smart, effective way to do that. And you want to ask pointed questions. You should be able to ask your installer, hey, you know, what are you doing about vibration? And get some clear answers on what their plan is for your specific unit. I always have a plan. Whenever I do a swap out or an install, this is how I'm going to keep it from being noisy in the house. Or I'm talking to the client and saying, hey, there's no way we're going to be able to stop this noise. Are you okay with that? And they know it in advance because I, I would rather talk about the problems beforehand in pre-construction than after it's installed and have an angry customer. That's just, you know, years of experience and, and understanding and wanting to deliver the best product that I can. So ask a lot of questions. A good installer is going to be able to explain to you what they designed, why they designed it, and how it's going in. Thanks, guys.